Good afternoon, นะครับ everyone, and welcome to um our class and happy um Lunar New Year today, นะครับ All right, okay. Good afternoon, ครับ Justin, and who else? Yeah, now what? And turn it on as well, นะครับ Good afternoon, everyone. So um, Garan as well, นะครับ Right. So um, today we begin with the um, presentation of the rest of the teams. นะครับ that we have got. นะครับ three teams left. นะครับ begin with um, the um, Jirapat team. นะครับ followed by Napong's team and Quarantine's team. นะครับ Okay. So um, Jirapat's team. ครับ If you're ready, please um, start your presentation. นะครับ for the Trends College. Um, yes. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So this is our presentation about the Trent College case. First, the case summary. Um, the Trent College is a private school in a small Maryland town, and it has outgrown its computerized registration system. Uh, because of that, it wants a new system. Altea Riddick, the college president, wants us to list the reasons for systems projects and assign a rel relative weight to each reason using a scale of one to 10. And our conclusions should be supported in a brief memo to her. We also need to create a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that will calculate the weighted values automatically for each reason. So in order to assign the weights for each uh, reason, we first establish a priority. Um, we thought that better performance should be the highest priority and improved service shortly after that. Then there are stronger controls, reduced cost, more information, and lastly, with the least importance, support for new products and services. And on the following slides, we want to show you our reasoning and wait for each of these cases. Oh, okay, for the first one, better performance because of the outgrow of the old system. So the better performance is the most listenable and most bad one to improve. So this can keep up with the number of legislation that more than before and it can improve the overall performance in any kind of things. Next, please. Uh, improve service. So when you when we have the new system, we should have the better experience for the user. So improved service is one of the our consideration when we create a new system. Next, a uh, stronger control. This might not really the the most important one, but the stronger control is make it easier for the teacher or the admin is the more control of the student or we can fix the old problem that we have. So the stronger control is one of the reasonable choice as well. Now we will discuss the reduced cost and um, we were not sure about the weight and uh, because of that we went with the middle with a weight of five because of course reduced cost is always desirable but it should not be the main concern because maybe if we increase the cost for the system we have like um yeah just better system quality and maybe it brings us benefits so uh, it might be viable to to um, accept uh, increase in cost if that has other benefits now we come to the next slide, more information. This is uh, similar because it depends on whether the system would benefit from more information. It could, but it could also be yeah, just 
sufficient with the current information. So this is also a bit unclear. And now come to the next slide. Support for new products and services. And this we were rated really low with a weight of two because uh, a registration system usually does not need to support new products and services. It's just for you know reg registration. And uh, so this is our least important weight. And uh, in the next slide, we can see an overview of all our weights. Um, here you can see better performance was our most important with a weight of 10. After that comes the improved service and then the stronger controls followed by reduced cost and more information with a weight of five and uh, the red one, just the weight of two. So a support for new products and services. That was our presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any um, questions, feel free to ask. And after this, the Excel sheet. Yeah. So for the Excel sheet, it's different from what the first group presented for this topic, because we it was unclear for us what the task was, uh, and we misunderstood. So this Excel sheet takes the weights we assigned, and then the scores, and we multiply them. So mm. we weren't sure what to do here. Okay. Yeah, actually, when you have this one, you have to apply the alternative. Suppose, I mean, like, you can see that for the score here um, in column C is for just like the score of like one, um, maybe one alternative. If you have like three different ways to solve or three different solutions, solution A, solution B, solution C might have different score for each reason. So you multiply the score of that alternative to the weight and then you get the total score, right? After that, you compare which alternative, give, um, which alternative get the highest score. For example, if you say that, okay, assume that, okay, this current column C is like alternative A, you give score to every um, reason to have like um, score as one, right? So that means the total score for this um, alternative get 37 points. Suppose you have like other two alternative with like um, different score in each reason. For example, if you say that, okay, for stronger control of this um, alternative, when compared with alternative A, you give um, two points, let's say. Okay, um, can, um, who is the owner? Laura, can you mm -hmm. just, just like put two for stronger controls of um, Scott, um, of alternative two? No, 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 stronger controls in row number six, please. Oh, sorry, I, I thought this was the stronger control, wrong yeah. line. Okay. And you say that, okay, um, improved service is three. Improved service is three. Bro, yeah. um, sell, sell D10, D10, you give three. Yeah, you just find this, um, the weight time score for column C and column D and see what's the difference. I think the function is not being carried over. Hello. Oh, yes. Right. Um, no, no, no. You have to multiply weight by score. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, um, yeah. I mistook oh. the function. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? As, as I just like wrote for you in the line group, that is, that is the one that you have to calculate. You can see that when you calculate the score, it seems like um, alternative two get higher score than alternative one. Alternative two get the higher score than alternative one. So the problem is with originally designed this to be multiplied with one of the lines and then the result is here and then it gets added. So uh, we would have to adjust the function. So 
Yeah. Okay. That it can be done for each. Yeah. Of the That's column. That's right. Yeah. You got it for this one. Okay. All right. So um, column C is not score. It's alternative one. Mm -hmm. I mean, C four is alternative one. C um, D four is alternative two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you would like to find the weight time score, you have to find weight time score of alternative one and weight time score of alternative two, and then you compare them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you okay. get the highest score. The highest score is the winner. Then you choose that one. No, 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 no. This one. Uh, um, no, um, this is this is the weight this is the alternative one, and this is the weight times alternative one. So this is the sum of this. Uh, yeah. The problem is we need to adjust the function. I can't do that right now. Yeah. Okay. You do it later. This is what I I tell you. Okay. Um. Right. Can we resubmit this Excel sheet? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You can resubmit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for this team. Now let's move on to the last, um, the last team's presentation that is from Corentin and your team. Have. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Ka? Yes, ka, Corentin. Who's talking? Is, is that uh, Thanakon, okay, yeah. yeah, you can start, Okay, 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 uh, good afternoon, guys. Okay. Um, Trent College is a private school in Maryland. Uh, the thing is the registration system is outgrown. So the college is considering a new system. What we did here is listing the reasons for systems projects and assign a weight and array to each reason. <clears throat> the reasons we consider it are improved services, better performance, support for new products and services, more information, stronger control, and reduce cost. We then discuss and explain why we read and read them that way. <clears throat> um, since the registration system is outgrown and old, we, we rated the improved service six because of the lack of capacities for the performances. The system registration has to be very slow, especially during the registration time. These two are very really important to give students an efficient and an efficient and quick registration system. That's the reason why the weight is nine and eight. The weight on the stronger controls and the reduced reduced costs are quite high because since there are too much students, we need more controls and securities to keep their privacy safe. Since the system is outgrown, it will be expensive for trying to improve the current system. This is why we rated it low with high rate. The reason why we let more information five is that there are so many students so the information need to be very clear. For example, students can clearly know how to use this system. And we read this one, this one uh, seven, because it is important to students to avoid mistakes and have power mis legislation. And they can make major decisions on planning and designing their courses. For support for new products and service, we wait is six, which is the lowest because the system do not need many new IT supports. 
but it requires more staff to support students when they have a problem with new system. And we related it to since they have so many students. So students need more staff to support or help them more quickly when they have a problem with the registration. Okay. Um, same as the previous team, I have <clears throat> for the second one, um, the second column for rating in here, column C that you have got, if you have many choices in column C, I have, you may have like um, um, one column per one alternative. And after that, you multiply um, the weight score by the rating of that alternative to get the weighted points of that alternative. And then um, the maximum score um, for any alternative will be the winner that you choose that one. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Kap. Thank you. Kap. So now let's move on to the last team. Kap. Sorry, I just like skip um, Napong's team. Kap. Napong's team, you may just like start your presentation. Kap. Okay. Kap. So for our summary, Chen College is a private school in Maryland, which has outgrown its computerized registration system. And the college president, Altia Reddick, asked us to list the reason for new system projects and give the rating and weight based on how important and urgent it is to the system. And we did this by providing an Excel sheet. Our first reason, is to improve services. To improve services, we gave it an eight out of 10 for the weight because it's important to have proper service to make it easier to use the system for both students and staff of the college. Specifically for user friendliness, we rated it a nine since we think the system would work best when everyone using it is happy with it. So they won't have any complaints about the system. And for better performance, we decided to give it a weight of eight. The new system will be able to process and re retrieve information faster than the current one, which will directly increase user experience. However, for this reason, we gave it a rating of seven, since performance isn't that important for a small school like Trent College. So the weighted rating for the whole, whole better performance is total to 56. For reduced cost, we gave it a weight of eight. The current system would be expensive to operate and maintain. Thus, it might increase the school variable cost. So we rate this as eight. So the weight, weight, weight rating for this reason is 64. Next for support for new products and services, we gave us support for new products and services at an eight. Since Trent College is a small school in Maryland, which are uh, usually behind on receiving access to new products and service. Furthermore, most of these products would be minor change to the college over a long period of time. So there is no need for the system to support these changes as it first pri priority. Support can slowly ro roll out new products and services since they are not under time constraints as well. But we decide to rate impro improved scalability since we would like to change and grow the college even more and handle more students as they enter the school. The weightage for stronger control should be then because to ensure that the data is secure and reliable, a system must have effective control. Few examples to secure could be by having passwords, different levels of user access, and encryption. All these could be used by Trend College to have stronger controls. The data must be accurate in order to be secured, and if Trend College take these controls into account, then it would minimize the data entry errors. Lastly, for more information, we think a nine would be better 
since the information provided by the company might be insufficient or incomplete or even unable to support the company's changing information needs. So for example, a system that tracks the customer's orders might not be capable of analyzing and predicting the marketing trends. So uh, in the face of intense competition and fast product development cycles, the managers need the best possible information to make major decisions on planning and designing the new products and services. So that's all for our case study. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Nahab. So for this team, it's similar to other two teams. I have whenever we have the um, Excel worksheet, um, you just like set up the, the um, each row to represent your criteria that you have got, I have, and you give the score of each criteria. After that, in each column, you may have like the score for each alternative that you get in each criteria. Then you multiply them together. I have, if you have more than one alternative, I have, any alternative that get the score, and I have the sum score, and I have when you multiply the weights, and I have by the score of that criteria, and I have the maximum one will be the winner that you choose that one, and I have just what belong. And I have. Okay, sorry about that. My mom just asked me to have lunch with just like um, the things that we just like pray for the gods. <laughs> okay. okay, then everyone. So um, just like continue with um, the things that we have. Okay. Actually, the, um, you can just like submit it as is. You didn't do anything wrong, but I just like want you to learn more. How do we gonna have just like some some um just like um decision making as actually actually um if we have a course that is called decision support system i have we are going to learn about this kind of techniques as well i have but in the future if you have to run the business this is the easiest way i have that we use um actually i'm not sure for um for the subject, for other subject like um, the basic, the AI or something, did you learn about decision tree and decision table? Not sure, it seems like everybody's quiet. Actually, this is the basic thing for AI when we just like do the decision table. Now, the, the table that you generate, this is decision table, but I mean like the content inside we just like add some more information to make the multiplication result to be the um to be the result in making a decision for every single condition that you have got in every single choice that we have got as well. Okay. Right. Okay, then now we are going to talk about module number three. Module number three. Let me just like share the screen to you guys. Okay, just won't be long. Okay, so um, do you see my screen, everyone? Okay, okay, have, right. Um, so this one, I have in this module, we are going to learn about requirements modeling. If you remember on the last module, we talk about the way in order to obtain the requirements, I have, we had, um, we had a couple of ways in order to do that. We can interview, we can just like um, distribute the questionnaires, we can just like observe and so on. 
So in this module, we will talk about the requirements um, modeling. When you obtain um, the requirement from the user already, นะครับ um, the way in order to interact นะครับ to the um, information systems and to the users นะครับ is to um, is to do via the modeling of the requirement as well นะครับ So in this module, we will learn about the um, system analysis phase activities นะครับ You will learn about the joint application development or JAD, นะครับ Rapid application development or RAD, agile methods, นะครับ And after that, we will learn about the function, um, the functional decomposition diagram or FDD to model the business functions and process that you gather from um the requirement of the users, นะครับ After that, we will learn about the UML, นะครับ the unified modeling language. And some example of UML diagrams used in the business. Then we will learn how to describe and list the system requirements that include the output, inputs, and processes. Have performance and controls. Then we will learn how to explain, นะครับ, or how to understand concept of scalability, นะครับ. We will learn the fact-finding techniques, including interviewing, document reviewing, observation, questionnaire, sampling, and research. Then we will learn about the total cost of ownership or TCO, and the way to conduct a successful interview to our users. Also, we will learn how to develop effective documentation methods. To use during system development, uh -huh. so for the requirement modeling here, right now we are at the step of system analysis. Uh -huh. This phase, uh -huh, system analysis, is the second of five phase in the system development life cycle or SDLC. Um, this phase will use requirement modeling, data and process modeling. Object modeling techniques to represent the new system. นะครับ You cannot use just the narrative ways in order to explain the system, but in order to let the users to understand, นะครับ How the new system look like. You need to use just like these kind of tools in order to help. Also, in this phase, we will consider various development strategies for the new system, and also we plan for the transition to system design task. Because in this phase, นะครับ um, it's the phase that the system analysts or consultants are discussing with the users, นะครับ And after this, we have to use the information or the requirement that we gather, นะครับ to pass to the developers in the next phase. That's why you have to just like prepare this phase properly. Otherwise, um, the developer will not understand what the Customers or what the users want. So this chapter will describe the requirements, modeling techniques, and team-based methods that system analysts and consultant use to visualize and document the new systems for developers and also for users as well. Um, then discuss system requirements and fact-finding techniques, which include um, the interviewing. นะครับ documentation review observation surveys and questionnaires sampling and research so in this phase when we talk about system analysis the overall objective of this phase is to understand the proposed project นะครับ or the proposed system also you have to ensure that it will support what users need It will support the business requirements that you gather from the users, and also um, to build the solid foundation for system development. Because otherwise, if you don't set up the system analysis model properly, um, developer might just like misinterpret what the users want, and the things that um, will be developed might be wrong or might not. Um, Comply with what users need. So for the system analysis phase, we have to use some tools to help that are models and also documentation tools as well. 
because the deliverable of this phase we need to get like the models นะครับ to let the users to sign off นะครับ that they understand what you try to prepare นะครับ or transform their need or their requirements to be the computer understandable sorry to to be the developer understandable forms นะครับ um, these models and documentation tools will help visualize the picture of the new system นะครับ and also describe the proposed system that they um, that the users need as well in this phase we have like activities for the analysis phase i have like this these are the tasks that we need to do uh, um for this one we need to do the requirement modeling uh, data processing or uh, sorry data and process modeling and object modeling uh, so for these requirements modeling will be um then forwarded to the development strategies uh, for the requirement modeling the things that we need to prepare นะครับ and model them are output input process performance and security that you have to specify for the system analysis activities we have data and process modeling object modeling development strategies that um, i mentioned in the previous slide that um, we need to prepare the system requirement document so for having or for conducting the system analysis activities the system analysts must have the system analysis skills like this that are um, the first one analysis skills and interpersonal skills uh -huh. um, system analysts should have strong analytical and interpersonal skills um, because whenever you have to just like um, gather the requirements uh -huh, when they uh, when the users just like tell you or reply what you ask uh, you must be able to analyze for what they need and transform them into um the models uh, also um interpersonal skill is important as well because when the users uh, when the users um has to talk to you uh, interpersonal skill is like um important so in this one, uh, for the team-oriented methods and techniques that also we also have to use, uh, the first one, some teams will implement uh, by using joint application development or JAD uh, that I'll talk about next on. JAD, it is an, um, a user-oriented technique. Normally, you have to let the users to join with your team why do you have why do you need them to join because the users will help finding um will help telling us or giving us the fact uh, for it's good for fact finding if you use jad and also the requirements modeling as well because they can help you whenever you need them uh, and because if they just like um, be in the team with you you don't have to waste the time to appoint them for just like um discussing or finalizing the the um, the model or the requirements because they will help you to do that uh, because it's not linked to a specific development methodology system developers will have to use JAD whenever group input and interaction are desired uh, while rad or rapid application development uh, it is the condensed version of the whole system development like development life cycle you get a small system uh, users involve every step of the way the rapid application development uh, will provide fast track approach to a full spectrum of um, system development um, tasks including planning design construction and implementation but it's just like a small version uh, we'll talk about it next on and the agile methods is another technique that um, um, people right now, uh, many of the companies, they also use a job method to just like make the system development analysis and design uh, or interaction design to be run faster. So let's begin with the joint application development. 
ครับ for the joint application development we need to have the users involvement in um this strategy นะครับ or in this technique users need to have a vital stake นะครับ in an information system they involve in every single step and they should participate fully so What is my suggestion? If you would like to run your team as a joint um, application development team, try to just like let your users to work with you as a full timers. That means if they can be with you, you can just like run chat easily because when the users are with you, I mean, just like not every users, but they are key users. Who can make a decision? Who know the process of um, the requirements that they are going to let us do? Have successful system must be user oriented. Users need to be involved because finally, when you finish um, analyze the system, you finish preparing the models. Um, the the users have to sign off, and if their boss sign off um, this document. You can just like go to the next step easily, or you can just like get paid. Uh, so if the users are with you, it will be easy to convince their boss for sure. Uh, because at least these users they know what the system does, uh, and also they know how to just like talk to their boss. And then one popular strategy for user involvement is a chat team approach. Uh, so If your users are ready and happy to be or to join the team, just use JAD. For the JAD participants and roles, we have these um, roles of people. JAD participant here, we have JAD project leader, top management, managers, users, system analysts, and other IT staff members and recorder. For JAD project leader, this person. Develops an agenda, acts as a facilitator, and leads the chat session. Uh -huh. While the top management, they normally they don't, they are not full time um, involved in the team, uh -huh, but they provide enterprise level authorization, uh -huh, um, the policy of the company, uh -huh, and also they support the project. Managers. Managers here might be managers of each um, department. Uh, they provide departmental level support for the project and understanding of how the project must support business functions and requirements. These managers, they are the boss of the users. Uh, the users will be the person who provide operational level input on current operations, desired changes. Input and output requirements, users interface issues, and how the project will support day-to-day -day tasks. Because normally there are people that use the system. Next, for us, system analysts and other IT staff members, this group of people provide technical assistance and resources for JAD. Especially because I mean, as I told you earlier, we have to transform the requirement of the users to be the model. Sometimes the users don't know how to just like read this kind of diagram, or sometimes you ask them to draw the diagram and send it to you. Then you have to be the one who just provide the technical assistance to them. Um, on issues such as security, backup hardware, software, and network capability, if they don't know how to just like prepare it. Or understand or use it, you have to let them know. Um, the question from Garan, you asked that are users basically consultant in JAD approach? Um, normally they are not called as a consultant, they are member of the team. We call them as users in the team. They are not consultant because they have to work with us. Normally, if we talk about consultants, you might think that. They are the one who just like um, suggest us to do this, not to do that. Um, I can tell you that for the person whose role that can be consultant might be the managers or the system analyst itself. Uh -huh. While the users and system analysts, 
um, they take the um, the equal um, responsibility to do the same thing uh, in chat. But one thing that users uh, has more than system analysts is that users are process owner. They know how to do that one. So the way that some team, some JD team does is that they let users to draw the diagram or to draw the model. Uh, and the system analyst will help checking for, it will help checking for the uh, validity of that model. While some teams, we say that, okay, system analyst does it, uh, prepare the models and let the users to check whether it's correct or not. Uh, while the last one, uh, recorder. Recorder, um, we say that, okay, um, these are people who just help documenting the result of JAD session and work with system analysts to build system models and develop case to documentation. In the reality, uh, you may not have like one person who work as a recorder because system analysts and users will have to responsible for the recorder, um, the recorder role. Uh, because I mean like anyone who just like think about this or who raised this issue uh, will be the one who prepared the model so that other people in the team will have to check uh, and then just like validate this kind of thing that they record. While some of the company, they may say that, okay, they have like one person who is the specialist in order to do the documentation, they do this one. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's just like once in the blue moon that you see the recorder as a separated person. Uh, okay, next. For the advantage, pros and cons of JAD, JAD is more expensive and can be cumbersome if the group is too large relative to the size of the project. Uh, users get paid or not? Yes, users get paid as their salary have no special payment for users because normally users have to work, um, I mean, during their office hours, same as us. Uh, like was hiring by the company as the um, as a staff or something else. Users normally they are users normally they are full time employee of the company, of your users company of your of your customers company. So that means if you work for that company, the what to say the um, users instead of working for their like everyday or day-to-day -day operations, they work with our team. They still get paid by um, your customer company, not by, not by consulting company or um, our company. Okay. Right, okay, next. Um, allow key users to participate effectively. This is pros, because if key users participate with the team, when they go back, they will be the key person to talk uh, or to negotiate with their people to use this system easily. Uh, it's better than us because we are developers. We are like maybe we are people whose um, customer company hire us. If we just like try to convince the users, it is more difficult than let the key users of the company themselves to convince their people. Uh, we said that when properly used, JAD can result in a more accurate statement of system requirements. Sure, because key users are the owner of those processes. They know better than just like us. I mean, like when we gather the information or the requirements and we just like do everything by ourselves, we may just be able to transform the requirement of the users to be the model maybe 18, I'm um, sorry, maybe 85 to 90%. But for sure, if we let the users, the key users themselves to do the modeling, they can do it 100% because the things that they are doing are their own work. They know what to do better than us. And also a better understanding of common goals, a stronger commitment to the success of the new system. Yeah, because the owner of the process do everything by themselves. Next, uh, for the RAD or rapid application development or somebody may call it as RAD, uh, this one, 
ะครับ this technique is a team based technique นะครับ this technique speeds up information system development and produces a functioning information system it relies heavily on prototyping and users involvement นะครับ this technique we use a um, lot of users involvement as well but the difficult part is that we have to prepare lots of prototyping นะครับ and um, most of the prototyping are just like operating of um, prototyping that means um, when you prepare the prototyping you never throw it away the prototyping will be added more and more on the previous prototyping to have like better and better and better version of prototyping and finally when the last prototyping is proposed that means the full system is ready นะครับ this is the interactive process นะครับ because you have to prepare sorry the users have to give you requirement นะครับ you have to just like prepare the prototyping and then get the feedback from the users from um testing the prototyping and then you just improve more adding more functionality to the prototyping so this is interactive process it continues until the system is completely developed and users are satisfied นะครับ like what for example let's think about um a barber นะครับ and a customer you can see that customer นะครับ when um he goes to a barber shop customer is like our users ครับ The system analysts, นะครับ or developer work as a barber. When um you just like um when the customer come, you just ask first, what hairstyle would you like to have? Suppose that one say that okay, I want undercut. Okay. Then um the system analyst, sorry, I call this one as barber. The bar barber will start just like cutting the hair, and ask the customer that is it okay? Do you want to have shorter? Or is this one enough? And when the customer tells you, you just like do cutting more and more, trimming more and more, until they said, okay, stop. I'm okay with it. That means they get like the full um the the full features of the system already, and then the users happy with it. They can just like pay you, and then they just go out from the barber. I have this is the um rapid application development ideas. And for the rapid application development, นะครับ we say that okay, um, we start from requirement planning task first. In this task, นะครับ um, users, managers, IT staff, we have to agree upon business needs, the scope of the project, and the requirement of the system. So in this step, นะครับ we need to have the uh, approval. นะครับ from the managers or from the executive นะครับ to continue if they are okay with all the requirements นะครับ with the scope already we move on to the next step so the next step is user design task in this part we have to interact with users to build models and prototypes and conduct intensive JAD type session นะครับ so in RAD we also have JAD as well to join with the users And then we start having the construction tasks. I have to build the programs and application development to do the coding, to do the testing for unit test, um, integration test, and system test. After that, I have when we just like have all of the things that the users want already, we have the cut over task. Cut over task means that when you just like um, are okay with the new system, newly developed system already. You need to do the data conversion to convert the data from the old system to the new one. Then you just run the full scale testing again, and after that we have to plan for the system change over. When we will have, when will we use the new system and not using the old system anymore? This is system change over, and then we need to do the conduct the user training as well. I have so that the users um, who will use the new system will know how to do that. For the objective of the rat, rat would like to cut the development time and expense. นะครับ We use, นะครับ
นะครับ the involvement of users in every phase of system development so that we don't need to go back and forth to meet the users maybe once a week something like that we meet them every day because they work with you as well same as JAD นะครับ the successful rad team must have IT resources skills and management support without um <clears throat> without one of these factors นะครับ it is quite difficult to become successful for the rad objective it helps development team นะครับ um, design a system that requires <clears throat> highly interactive or complex user interface so when you need to have the um, interactive user interface or complex user interface you should have them with you so that they can give you the response whether it's okay or not for um, for the interface that we are designing นะครับ pros and cons For pros and cons, system, นะครับ can be developed more quickly with significant cost saving because when we save the time, นะครับ we try we try to save our time and then um when we use RAD, นะครับ system can be developed more quickly. By the way, RAD stresses the mechanic of the system itself. And it does not emphasize on company strategic business needs because you try to do everything quickly. Sometimes you just like skip, นะครับ or omit the company strategic business needs because we normally work with users, and the users try to just like do everything to serve what they have to do in the everyday's life, um, rather than the strategic business needs, นะครับ And red might allow less time to develop quality. Consistency and design standards, because we have like um, related people work with you all the time. Uh -huh. Apart from rapid application development or RAD, another technique that um, many companies use nowadays, uh -huh, our agile method. Uh -huh. um, I just give you some ideas. Uh -huh. On last Friday, uh -huh, on last Friday. Um, I had a class that is the cooperative education that your senior um, went for it, and they had the presentation on last Friday. Some of them, นะครับ had the presentation talking about like the techniques that um that company used in order to conduct the system development. That is agile methods, นะครับ This kind of method, นะครับ right now many companies have been using it, นะครับ This one, agile methods attempt to develop a system incrementally, นะครับ not one hit like RAD did, นะครับ just like gradually do it, incrementally do it, นะครับ agile and modeling tool set include support for many modeling tools, นะครับ because as I told you that right now many companies they use agile uh, methods, so that's why in the market they have like a lot of modeling tool set for agile, นะครับ Some agile developers prefer not to use case tools. นะครับ I'll talk about the case tool in details when we reach the part. But some um, of agile developer they rely instead on a whiteboard display, arrangement of movable movable sticky notes. So normally, นะครับ many of agile techniques or agile team that I saw, นะครับ in the morning time they have meeting, นะครับ And then everybody will have like the post-it note with them, maybe in different colors. And when they have any ideas or anything new, they just write down on their post-it note, and then just like um affix on the um on the wall something like that. And they may just like um take a photo, นะครับ and then share to their teams for the ideas that they think about. And um they don't need to write down their name on the sticky notes because. Um, they use the color to separate who owns what color of the sticky sticky notes that they can just like put it on the um, on the board. I have something like that. Um, for the agile method, they call um, the team as Scrum. I have Scrum is a rugby team. I have so in that team they have picks. I have picks include the product owner, facilitator, and the the, the development team. While the chickens include users, other stakeholders, and managers, they go together in the Scrum. I have Scrum session have specific guidelines that emphasize time blocks, interaction, 
and team-based activities that result in deliverable software. As I mentioned earlier, every morning, I have, um, they may have scrum, I have that every, everyone like pigs and chickens meet each other in the meeting room and then just like start doing that task by just like initiating the ideas, writing on the um, sticky note and then attach on the um, wall and then discuss something like that. But they need to have the specific guideline in order to do um, this kind of scrum in each morning. At least it needs to serve like what the teams want to have. For the agile method, let's talk about pros and cons. For Agile method, they are um, very flexible. They are very flexible. And also they are so efficient in dealing with change because you can see that if there are some changes that you discover this afternoon, in the next morning, you have a scrum again, and then you can just like inform to, your, to the team, to the scrum, and then you can just like change um, the things that you have got from the previous days by having a sticky note attached or affixed on top of the previous sticky note that you affixed on yesterday, something like that. Frequent deliverable constantly validate the project and reduce risk because everyone see them. And if there is a change, you can change it straight away instead of waiting maybe a week or two, something like that, because normally the scrum, they normally have like every uh, morning for example, if you work Monday to um, Monday to Friday, you have like scrum meeting every morning, something like that. And the next thing is that team members need a high level of technical and interpersonal skills. That means before scrum can start, users and the development team has to just like um, has to discuss and train for how do we gonna run the scrum in each uh, morning, who can write and who cannot write anything, and what you can do for the writing on the um, sticky notes, something like that. But anyway, it may be subject to significant change in scope, because if you change every day, scope might be changed as well. So you have to be careful. That means you need to have someone who can control the scope, like the project manager, can help controlling the scope of the project and have not to be just like um, too big or too change have for, for that kind of the scrum have in the agile method that we have got. The next thing have that we have to know after we learn about like the techniques that we have have already is about the tools, have the modeling tools that we have, have, that we can use and modeling techniques that we can use. Um, for the modeling tools and techniques, it involves graphical methods and non-technical language. I have, this is important, I have graphical methods and non-technical language. That means we would like our users to understand what we are doing the model I have on the modeling as well. Um, it will represent system at various stage of development. For um, one project, you may use various tools in order to be the modeling tools. The first one is functional decomposition diagrams or FDD. I'll show you later. For the FDD, it helps model the business functions and show how they are organized into lower level processes. I have for the FDD. Next, we may talk about the business process modeling. In order to model the business process, we can use BPM or business process model, BPMN or business process modeling notation, pool and swim lanes I have as a model to represent the business process. Next, I have data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams or DFD. I have this one. I will, um, we will have the workshop for this one, so that you can practice of just like drawing um, the data flow diagrams. I have data flow diagrams will show how system stores, processes, and transform the data from one process to another process. 
The additional levels of information and details are depicted in other related data flow diagrams. Uh -huh. That means data flow diagram has been separated into various levels. Uh -huh. And then we just like use the um, data flow diagrams to just like show uh -huh, different levels of them. The next thing is UML, uh -huh, Unified Modeling Language. This one, we use this method of visualizing and documenting software system design. Uh -huh. um, in this one, somebody who just like um, prefer to use the object oriented methods may use the UML to help as well. Uh -huh. um, for this one, uh -huh, we use the use case diagrams and then we have the actor uh -huh, of that use case. And then we have a sequence diagram. After that, when we talk about the modeling tools and techniques that we may use already, the next one that I want to talk about is the output input process and so on. For the output, when we talk about the check, um, the system requirement checklist, you need to check for this thing. The first one, when you have to check for the output, for example, the website must report online volume statistics every four hours and hourly during peak periods. Uh -huh. So this one might be the checklist that, okay, um, when we develop the website, uh -huh, does it report online volume statistic every four hours or not? If yes, you tick pass, something like that. Next that you have to check is that, okay, next example, uh -huh, like, Inventory system must produce daily report showing the part number, description, quantity on hand, quantity allocated, quantity available, and unit cost of all sorted by part numbers. So for checklist in here, it tells us that, okay, if we are developing inventory system, does it produce daily report? If yes, you tick yes. And inside, does that report shows part number, description, quantity on hand, and so on or not? If yes, okay, you tick pass. And the last one, does it sort by part number or not? Uh -huh. Because in this one, it said that, okay, all sorted by part number. If it's not sorted, you don't tick to pass um, this one. But if it's also sorted by part numbers, okay, it's passed. So these are checklists that you have to check when you have the output, what are they? What are the details in that, um, in each output that you have got? And then you just tick when um, you have to check whether they have like all what you need or not, um, is it um, all you need or not. I have. The next one, we have inputs. For the checklist of inputs, you also have to do similar thing as you did with the output. I have. Check what are inputs that we, we are going to have and do they perform for what you have, um, for what you want or not, for example. In here, we say that for the inputs, uh -huh, like um, the manufacturing employees must wipe their ID cards into online data collection terminals that record labor costs and calculate production efficiency. So the things that you may have to check is that the first one, do we provide the um, ID cards um, reader that customer or employees can swipe or not? Uh -huh. Once they just swipe their card. Does the information is sent to um, the online data collection terminal or not? Uh -huh. And if the data is sent there, does the labor cost uh -huh, is used to calculate production efficiency or not? Uh -huh. The department head must enter overtime hours on a separate screen. Do we have a separate screen for department head or not to, um, to let them or to allow them to enter overtime hours. Uh -huh. Okay, so these are just like input that uh, we may have to check. For process as well, you also have to uh, need the checklist for checking on the process as well. For example, student record system must calculate the GPA at the end of each semester. So we may just have to check that, okay, at the end of semester, are there any functions in order to calculate the GPA of the student or not? Or does, if we just like say that, okay, we have a button to end the semester, does the student record system automatically calculate GPA or not? <clears throat> Next, 
นะครับ as the final step in the year end processing the payroll system must update employee salaries bonuses and benefits and produce tax data required by IRS นะครับ um, so in this one you may say that okay um, you just like have payroll system นะครับ and the final step Does that system update this information or not? And does this system produce tax data or not? นะครับ You need to just like prepare the checklist on just like this kind of system that you have to do it. นะครับ After that, in term of performance, นะครับ You also have to check, for example, <coughs> system must support 25 users online simultaneously. Does the system do that or not? Does the system res um, response time must not exceed four seconds or not? If it's just like spend three seconds, you take pass. The checklist is passed. Uh, the next one is controls, such as system must provide lock on security at the operating system level and at the application level. Do we have it or not? Uh, employee record must be added, changed, or deleted. By a member of the human resources department, for example, you may say that okay, you simulate by using a user who is sales, who is from sales department. Does that person be able to add, to change, or to delete the record of an employee or not? If yes, you tick no. I have. Otherwise, if it allows just only human resource department people, I have who is uh, who are authorized to do that, to just like um. Edit, นะครับ the record. Then you just like tick past. In term of scalability, scalability, we say that okay when we talk about the future growth, cost and benefit of using, นะครับ the new system. In term of scalability, you have to think about it as well, นะครับ So because when the time goes by, นะครับ the system. Has to be able to just like scalable. For example, if in the next two years you have more people or more users, can system support more than um, the current users that we have got or not? Uh, for example, if you say that in the past when you develop a system, there's no lock-in process at all, then that means anyone who just like install this program can use can update this in the information in this um, system. But in the future, if we say that we have like 1,000 users, นะครับ who would like to use this system uniquely, so that means you need to keep track that who is using the system, and you allow just certain users to use it as well. Then scalability is important. Or right now we say that the systems are running and we use up to 50,000 users, and we say that okay in the next two years. We would like to have just like 200 users left, and the rest of the users will use the new system that are in the um, is the the cloud computing instead. So when the system is small, นะครับ is smaller, uh, we may say that okay at that time we don't need to just like run three parallel servers at the same time. It might be just like one um single server left, something like that, นะครับ So the set a scalable system offer better return on initial investment. Because um, we know that okay, how much do we have to invest? Uh, to evaluate scalability, you need information about projected future volume for all output, input, and processes. So you need to know how to project those future volume of this kind of thing as well. Uh, for example, um, if we are talking about Sky Plus system, we say that okay, currently we have 4,000 Students, นะครับ um, plus maybe one, um, sorry, 500 um, other people, other users, for example, um, faculty members and staff who have to use um, Sky Plus system as well. For example, นะครับ you can see that you may think that oh, the um, Sky Plus should be used for uh, by students, นะครับ um, Faculty members like your advisors and lecturer only, but actually it's not true. Huh? The staff has to use this system as well. Huh? For example, um, the secretary of um, each division has to prepare the course 
to enter into the system before the term start. Also, the um, secretary has to just like summarize like some data uh, from the um, SkyFast system as well. So that's why um, you can see that secretary uh, who are um, supporting staff, they have to use this system as well. Apart from that one, if this is a regular term, I have to book the classroom, right? The secretary will book the classroom for me. But when I have to just like teach you, for example, if I would like to schedule a makeup class, I have to book the room, right? And when I book the room, um, the um, building department, they have to just like, the staff has to just like prepare the room for me. Uh -huh. Apart from that one, if I take that, I would like to have like some special equipment, for example, if I say that I would like to have the visualizer, two visualizers, not just one in each classroom, it has the visualizer, one visualizer only, right? I want two and I want two projectors. So when I just like tick like that, the um, education technology department has to just like prepare this one for me. Then they have to be able to log in into the system as well to just like um, check for the requirements of each ajahn. So that's why we have to repair that. Okay, right now it's around like 4,500 users. In the next three years, it might be just like scalable up to six or 7,000 people or users to use this system as well. So you need to know how to project the future volume of these things. Uh -huh. Next on, we talk about total cost of ownership or TCO uh -huh, that you have to know. Um, the total cost of ownership uh -huh, is a comprehensive um, assessment of information technology or other costs across enterprise boundary over time. For IT, TCO includes hardware and software acquisition, management and support, communication, end user um, expenses and the opportunity cost of downtime, training, and other productivity losses. So all of these expenses come together to become the total cost of ownership to use that software or to use that system in a company. It is especially important if development team is evaluating several, um, several alternatives like I told you, like hardware, software acquisition, management and support, communication and so on. Uh -huh. Because sometimes um, if you don't think about like all of other costs, uh -huh, um, the cost might be overrun uh -huh, for the TCO. Uh -huh. It might be very or too expensive for you, something like that. For example, uh -huh, for example, let's imagine that, okay, if Sky Plus is using mainframe computer let's see now nah, it's using mainframe computer in the past we said that there are so many system use the same mainframe computer so the total cost of ownership might be nah, the maintenance might also include the maintenance cost let's say um, the maintenance cost for mainframe computer in each year might be six million baht let's say and if we have around 10 different systems who use this um, mainframe computer. So that means when you calculate the um, total cost of ownership in each year, let's say if you say that you plan to use um, Sky Plus for five years, that means for the whole five years, we pay the maintenance cost for mainframe computer 600,000 baht per year. For five years, it is 3 million baht. Okay, you say that is acceptable. But you forgot that other system will use this mainframe computer for another one year. After that, they just like buy their own small servers. So, but you don't plan for running the system on the small server, you still plan on mainframe computer. You can see that in the first year, the maintenance cost might be 600,000 baht for you, but on year two to year five, each year, the maintenance cost for mainframe computer will be responsible for you by your system only. That is 6 million baht. That means in another four years, you have to pay six times four. That is 24 million baht 
just for maintaining mainframe computer. This is the problem, นะครับ When you have to think about the total cost of ownership, you have to think carefully that you must not think. Sorry, you must not um, overlook on some factors or on some costs that you have to think about, like the example of mainframe computer that I told you. We said that the one problem for total cost of ownership is that all the cost estimates tend to understate indirect costs, like I told you, like the what to say, the uh, maintenance costs like that. Or sometimes some companies say that they have to think of electricity bills as well in order to run this system, because you have to know that okay, let's say if we say that we want to just like run it. Um, by having a server room and we turn on air conditioners all the time for the server room and we say that okay our last year the electricity cost was increasing for around like 20 percent let's say that means you have to think about this as well I have done understate some indirect costs and there might be some rapid economic justification that okay for sometimes when the situation of um, that country is changed for the economy I have what are we going to do? How do we gonna plan it? After that, when we talk about the future growth and the total cost of ownership already, the next thing that we have to talk about is the fact finding. For the fact finding, we need to know about how to identify information we need in order to develop a fact-finding plan. You have to know first what kind of information or what information would you need or do you need to have. Okay, so that you can just like plan the fact-finding properly. For the fact-finding plan, you have to think about who, what, where, when, how, and why. The, the differences between asking what is being done and what could or should be done. So you have to ask, with these um, six, seven um, question words. So for the, sec, um, for the fact finding, uh, we may just like um, use the segment framework to help showing that, okay, these are just like the way that um, the world leading companies use in order to just like um, locate the fact finding ways. Um, the segment framework here uh, is for enterprise architecture. These kind of, um, um, framework helps managers and users to understand model and assure that overall business goals can be translated into a successful IT project. So when we just like, um, this is just like um, introducing the, the framework for you, Nahab, you can just like go and have a look how segment framework Nahab, just like deliver. So the first technique in order to do in order to do the um, fact finding is what we call interview. For the interviewing, uh, there are many steps that you have to know. The first step is that you have to determine uh, the people to interview. You have to determine the people to interview. Um, this is informal structure. Uh, you have to think first who can give you the information that you want. Uh, when should you just like um, appoint them for the meeting uh, for interviewing. After that, step number two, when you know who to interview already, you have to establish objective for the interview. Uh, so in this one, you have to determine the general areas uh, to be discussed a list of the fact that you would like to get or would you would like to gather from that interviewee. Step number three, you have to develop interview questions. So for this step, you have to create a standard list of interview questions. The standard list of interview, of interview questions will help you to keep you on track and avoid unnecessary tangents. So do not go to interview anyone without any question list, uh, because you can be just like distracted to be just like some other ways. And finally, when you just like finish the time that you just like meet with them already, you may not just like get the things that you want to develop. Uh, try to avoid leading questions. Uh, for example, leading question is like the question that you try to lead the answers 
to the interviewee, for example, um, you, you shouldn't say that, okay, why do you think that the previous system is not good? Or you shouldn't use the word like, why do you think that um, the system is obsolete? But you should just like use the word is that um, to ask like, okay, how many years have you been using the current system? Okay. Or uh, would, uh, what kind of features would you think that the, um, the current system is lacking? What are the functions that you need more? Okay, something like that. That is not the leading questions to have. Next, open-ended and closed-ended question. Open then, I'm oh, sorry. Open ended questions are the question that you would like to ask to let the users to express their ideas, their feelings, their requirements. While the closed ended questions are the question that users have like some specific answers. For example, um, closed ended questions are like, have you ever used this function before? Okay. Um, how frequent that you have to use this system? Okay. So normally they may say that once a day, twice a day, once a month, something like that. Okay, so these um, answers are quite specific. So that's why we call it as closed-ended question. But open-ended questions are like, okay, what features do you think that the current, um, sorry, the new system should also provide it? So this one is the open-ended. Uh -huh. And you may just like have range of response question, like you may, Sometimes you may have just like let, let them to rank uh, have which features that they should think it is the most important thing. And then you list out choice A, A, B, C, D, something like that. And then you may let them just like rank them, which one is the most important one, which one is the next important, which one is the least important so that you can just like um, postpone that kind of system development for that function. Um, after that, we talk about step number four. After we develop question already, we go to prepare for the interview. Uh -huh. In this step, the careful preparation is essential because an interview is an important meeting. It's an important meeting and not just a casual chat. Uh -huh. You go um, to meet them because you have the intention to do something. You have the objective for um, um, interviewing. Uh -huh. So, limit the interview to be no more than one hour, to be no more than one hour. You can see that if you remember for the interview, for MUIC, we maybe ask you like 20 minutes, something like that. If the interview is conducting more than one hour, the users cannot, or the interviewee cannot concentrate anymore. They will feel bored they will feel tired uh -huh. and then the answers that they try to answer us at the very last question might not be useful at all. So that's why try to limit the interview to be no more than one hour because they may have like some other work to do after this. So try not to just like book them for the full day for um, interviewing. It may be just like um, one hour only or maybe 45 minutes, something like that. Okay. Before you interview, uh -huh. you should send them the list of topics. This one is different from interviewing a student. Uh -huh. The list of topics that we have to send to the interviewee in the information system is that um, we would like them to prepare some document to support their answers. Uh -huh. That's why we have to send that list of topics first. And some of the question that um, you are going to ask them, they may not, um, they may not be able to answer then they may ask someone else for you, uh -huh. or they may say that, okay, this one is, is, is out of the scope, something like that. So that's why you should send them the list of topic first and ask the interviewee to have samples available or documents available because when um, you ask them on the current system, uh -huh, you may not have any ideas about how the current system looks like. You may ask them to just like show the current system to you I have and then you just like you may just like record that um, current system screenshot or something like that. That's why the interviewee I have um, should be asked to prepare the samples I have or documents that they have thought. 
sometimes นะครับ some documents are confidential when you just send them the list of the topics นะครับ and the list of the documents that you may ask to have they may have the time to prepare the document by just like um, blind the parts that it is confidential before they send it to you นะครับ okay step number five in step number five We have to. It's a time for conducting the interview. So, to conduct the interview, you have to develop specific plan for the meeting. When you arrive the meeting room, นะครับ and your interviewee just arrive, นะครับ you have to begin by introducing yourself first. What is your name? Who you are? And why do you come here? Describing the project, and explaining your interview objective, นะครับ And the next one, engage listening. So, to um, the things that you and the interviewees shouldn't do is that both of you shouldn't be on mobile phone when you are just like interviewing to each other, or answering the question, in the interviewing session. You must not um, be on the um, smartphone. Okay. Then allow the person enough time to think about the. Question. I have before they can just like think about the answer. After the interview, you should summarize the session and seek a confirmation. So what should uh, what should we do? Have because we just like prepare the script of the list of the question. You may take some notes, and when you finish all the um, question already, you may just like read. I have the summary of each answer that you gather from them, so that. Um, they understand that okay, um, you get what they're trying to tell or not. Uh -huh. After that, step six: document the interview. Don't just listen. Uh -huh. You have to do the documenting of the interview. Uh -huh. Note taking, you can do it. You should do it, but you should. Um, it should be kept to a minimum. Don't write every word. Uh -huh. It's too much. After conducting the interview, you must record the information quickly. For example, if you finish the um, the interviewing around like 2 p.m. today, have by 5 p.m. you should just like finish um, finish um, recording the information. Otherwise, you forget. Uh, except somebody say that while they are interviewing, they re, um, they ask for recording some um, voice as well. That is okay, but I mean, like, don't don't just like wait until maybe like another week to do. Otherwise, it will just like waste the time, and you may forget. นะครับ um, After the interview, send a memo to the interviewee expressing your appreciation to thank them for their time, นะครับ Their contribution to this interviewing. นะครับ Also, you have to note the time, location, purpose of the interview, and the main points you discuss. So the interviewee has a written summary. นะครับ and and can offer additions or correction so this is a suggestion นะครับ when you just like um document this the interview already send it to the um the interviewee นะครับ and ask them that okay if you have comments นะครับ or some modification please feel free to do that นะครับ so that they can help you for the things that you send is it okay or not นะครับ okay so After they just like um, send us, นะครับ or help us for additions or correction, นะครับ already from our um, interview documents, นะครับ um, the last step of the interview that you have to do is step number seven, นะครับ that is evaluate, นะครับ that is evaluate the interview, that is evaluate the interview. This one, นะครับ Um, it's in addition to recording the facts obtained in the interview, you try to identify any possible biases. For example, suppose the users who are the interviewee doesn't like the current system. From the interviewing, you you hear some biasness, and then you just like take some notes. This one, you know that okay, um, this is a bias. Because I mean, like when you have to just like um, develop the new system, นะครับ Sometimes the current system in this function uh, is good already, 
the way that you have to do is that you may just like bring the logic from the old system to the new system in this part uh -huh, and add something of it. Uh, but I mean, like if you don't know that it's bias, the thing that you may do is that you redo everything as like this user told you, uh -huh, that might just like take some time to do that. Uh -huh. Also, uh -huh, sometimes, you may get some unsuccessful interviews. In this one, I can say that no matter how well you prepare for interviews, some are not successful. Because sometimes when you just like um, start interviewing, the users just like um, have like phone call all the time and they just like got distracted. Or sometimes, uh -huh, their um that their, their subordinates just ask them for signing some document or their boss just call them and they say that sorry i have to run to just like um pick up a phone for my boss um the guest is coming something like that and then that interview might be unsuccessful and if you say that okay i'll come back again next time no i have normally if you just like conduct the interviewing with one person i have normally they give you just like one time to meet with them and have something like that. So um, this one, you have to be careful that sometimes you may need to have plan B if the unsuccess, if the interview is un unsuccessful as well. Have, this is the um, interviewing that you should know. Have, um, normally, what should we do if we have to conduct the interview? Um, the interviewing, you should just like around like three to five working days ahead that you should just like appoint uh, for the uh, for the interview uh, so that um, the person who, who you would like to interview them uh, will have the time to prepare themselves uh, and also they may be able to just like prepare the document for you as well uh, that um, will be used as the example um, in the um, things that you would like to ask. I have, okay. And normally the best time, I have the best time for going to interview is around 10 to 11 or 11 to 12, have, it depends on you. Or sometimes it might be from 1.30 to 2.30, I have. Try not to set up the interview around like one, one o'clock sharp. Sometimes you, even though it's possible I have, for one o'clock sharp, but somebody, I mean, like they just like have to run back from their lunch and I have to meet with you, something like that. Or sometimes somebody, they may have like some business lunch and uh, one o'clock sharp, they may not be able to finish it. Then you may have to wait, something like that. Uh -huh. So uh, when you work for a while, you, you know that what is the best time for you users because it's different from one company to another company. Uh -huh. Some company, they say that they have like the exact um, 12 to one o'clock sharp for the um, for the lunch. That means if you meet with them 11 o'clock, uh -huh, don't just try to just go beyond 12 o'clock. At most you should finish, let's say five minutes or 10 minutes before their lunch time because they have to, um, I mean like most of the, um, of most of the people, they have the limited time for their lunch. So don't just waste that time. Okay, right. Okay, that is for the interviewing part. <clears throat> On the next class, I will talk about the other fact finding techniques that you should know. All right. <coughs> so everyone up to this point, do you have any questions?